My question to the teacher is, could you please explain how to determine the maximum area of an expression using calculus? Yes, Amanda, this is a very good question. It says that please explain to, to me how to determine the maximum area of an expression using calculus. Now, I'm going to love doing this, but remember, guys, in Galeza Nazi, we don't have time to do everything. You got to get onto Moby School, and in Moby School, I tell you, at the moment we've just got the starters. If you want the main course, you got to get onto Moby School. It's good stuff, and we're going to be looking at um, maximization in Moby School. But let's let's do a bit of a starter, you know, maybe something juicy. Okay, let's have a look here. Here's an example. I'm going to go straight to the example and explain this. A school wants to create a rectangular car park, and they've got a hundred meters of wire fencing. Okay, now why is that so? Because you can just imagine at school, I know the school that I teach at, is there's chaos. There's chaos with cars all over the place. So we want to get a car park, a rectangular car park. Now it's a very real world question this. And they've got a hundred meters of existing wire fencing that they want to put around the rectangular car park. And they have two existing walls. Guys, there's actually two walls and they want to put some fencing around. I'll show you a picture now. Determine the dimensions which give a maximum enclosed area. Why do you think they, uh, let me ask the guys in studio, why do you think that the school would want to have the maximum space available in their car park? Well, why would you say so, anybody? I think uh, to have uh, more space for extra cars. For exactly. Work. Now look at this. This is maths in the real world. A very real world problem. You want to maximize. You want to have a lot of space for a lot of cars. Because otherwise the parents are going to moan. Do you agree? Yeah. If they can't park their cars. Okay. So here we go, guys. Have a look. Here we look at the, at the diagram. We've got two walls. And the, the X and the Y would be the fencing. Okay, look at that. So we're going to call the breadth or the width X and the length we're going to call y and what do we know the fencing has got to be a hundred meters do you agree so can any of you think of an equation that relates the x and the y to the total amount of fencing anybody got an idea can you think of something mathematical you've got the x and the y and they, they, they must add up to a hundred so what equation would you get would you say think, uh, we can use the equation of the area the area, excellent, which is x times y, very good. And what about the, the fencing? If you've got the x and the y and it must add up to 100, what would you say? Have a look there. x plus y must be? 100. 100, you see. Now, what you did there, you, um, you said x times y, which is the area. We want the maximum area, brilliant. Okay, and then can you see we've got x plus y is 100. Now what we've got to do is we've got to get the maximum area. Do you agree? Yes. We've got 100 meters of fencing. Now Mzanzi, listen to me. What are we going to do? Okay, We're, this is a real world problem at your school. Okay, now check this out. We've got x plus y is 100. Now what I could do is I could say y is 100 minus x. Do you agree? Okay, now let's have a look. If we continue with this, We've got y equals 100 minus x, and we've got an expression for the area. Now, people, listen to me. You want to get the maximum area. You want to maximize the area. Real world problem. Now, check this. What I simply do, now watch this. In Moby School, we do it in a lot more detail. You change the y to x, and have a look at this. You're going to get a, a new expression, 100x, minus x squared. Now, if you look at that area expression, what kind of graph is x squared minus x squared? Anybody in studio? Amanda, you got an idea? Well, <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm sure that because okay. sure these young men actually like to answer. Yeah. Let me not take what the What kind time. of graph is minus x squared plus 100x? Anybody got an idea? Uh, I think it might be a linear graph. A linear? Okay, that would be a straight line. But what about a graph that looks got an x squared in it? Anybody got an idea? Curve. Curve, which is called a parabola. Somebody said it there. Yeah. Come on, somebody said it. Guys in studio, it's not the Eastern Cape, it's KwaZulu Natal. Who's it there? <laughs> it's some Piwe. Some people, oh my gosh, I'm hearing something over the airways. The Sangoma magic, let's just throw the bones. I'm hearing it. 
I'm hearing it, Amanda. Mm -hmm. It's some P-Wave from Durban. Oh, okay. She said it's a parabola. Oh, my word. I don't know about you guys. They're talking across the airlines. The San Goma magic is happening in studio in Galeza Nati. Now, check this out, guys. I'm going to draw this. This is too good to be true. I've heard that. I have seen the light, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I've seen the light. Listen to me. It's a parabola. It looks like this. Do you remember that kind of graph? And at the parabola's turning point, you get a maximum. That's the, listen, that's the expression for area there. Is that not a, a pleasure or what? That is an expression for a parabola and, it's, and it's, it represents the area. Now watch the magic unfold with calculus. Check this out. If we differentiate, now in Moby School, I'm gonna go into this in more detail. Do you remember, have you guys done differentiation? Are you in, you, you, in matric, you've done it, eh? Yes. The derivative. Now, if you put the derivative equal to naught, there's a zero, Mariah Carey. When you look inside your TV, you don't have to be afraid of calculus. <laughs> Simon Cowell, here we come. Hey, Amanda. <laughs> okay, now check this out. You've got two x. You've got to admit this is, this is beautiful stuff. The derivative equals naught, x equals 50. Now, if x is, listen, the area expression is a parabola with a maximum. Mm -hmm. Check this out. This is good stuff. It's a maximum at the turning point. The derivative equals naught. Oh my word, you've got to get to Moby School. You've got to see this. This is, this is the starters. You want to have that nice juicy T-bone steak coming up in Moby School. Okay. Oh man, but this is, this is juicy. Now have a look. There's X is 50. Now, if you look at this, Y is, is going to equal 100 minus 50, which is 50. So if your dimensions, if you have a look at this, would be 50 meters, by 50 meters, in other words, a square. If this school creates the car park with 100 meters of fencing, 50 by 50, did you know what's gonna happen? You are going to maximize, you're gonna have the maximum area. You can put a lot of cars into that space. And you know what that means? Lots of parents are gonna be happy. Isn't that incredible? That is absolutely important. Now remember also guys, you can, you can tell me what do you think is gonna happen if you wanna say minimize cost or something. Say for example, the expression worked out like this. Okay, what can you tell me? What is that there? It's a parabola with a minimum. You see, now in the real world, what we use calculus for, and I think this is important, many students don't understand why we use mathematics. Now think about it, if you think about the derivative, if you've got a business, what do you want to do? You want to maximize, maximize your profit, but minimize your costs. Now think of a company that creates a rectangular or a cylindrical tin for cold drink. It's got a surface area, do you agree? That's the metal that makes the container. They, they've got a set amount of volume. The volume is the amount of liquid or drink inside that container. But what does the business want to do? They want to minimize the surface area. Why do you think so? Because they want to cut down on costs and they can use calculus to be able to do that. Is that not amazing? Incredible. I mean, how much time have we got? Have we got some time? <laughs> One minute left. Okay, so we haven't got much time to go on. So Moby School, Moby School, you've got to get onto it. It's going to, it's going to take you, it's going to change your life. Hallelujah, I can feel it. I can sense a distinction. Come on, on guys. Mm. Amen. Now listen to me. I should be on that TV program, TBN, you know, the evangelist, the mathematical son, Gorma. Okay, so guys, look at this. Maths in the real world. Good stuff, isn't it? Please explain the rate of change involving the, water, the volume of water in a tank. Absolutely, that's exactly with the challenge question, which is very good. Is the volume of water in a horse trough or in a tank? Now, do you know, guys, if you go to have a bath like that, the water rises and then you let it out and it goes down. That's calculus. When I was bathing one night, I actually did some calculus and I created a, a, a thing of it. Now listen to this. This is a horse trough. Let's look at this example. The volume of water in a horse, horse trough is governed by this equation for T from 0 to 20 minutes. Okay, so it's obviously quite a big trough. V is volume and water is cubic meters. Now have a look. This is the graph of the, the, of the, the, equa of the equation of motion. Now notice at 0, after T equals 0, it goes, uh, it, it, there's, no, there's no volume in, then it starts filling, it reaches its maximum, and then it goes all the way down. Now the first question, determine the volume 
at t equals 2. Well, let's have a look at t equals 2. There's an expression for volume, so we go v2 is equal to 20 times 2 minus 2 squared, which is 36 cubic meters. You see that, guys? So you plug in into the expression set. So if we go back and you look at that, at t equals 2, have a look here. If I get a pen, at t equals 2, your volume is going to be 36 there. Can you see that there at 2? And do you notice that there's a tangent line there? It means that the volume is increasing. The gradient of the tangent's positive. Do you remember that from school? goes up. Then what happens when it reaches its turning point? It stops moving. It goes up. It goes up and then it stops and then it becomes stationary and then it goes down. Notice over here at 16 it's going down. Do you see that there? Okay, so let's look at another question. There's the volume. So let's go the rate of change. That's the speed at which the, the water is going into the, into the trough there. And that is called the derivative. So we get the derivative. At Moby School, I'm going to explore this in a lot of detail. 20 minus 2t. Do you remember how to do that, guys? Remember the derivatives. Have you done that at school? <laughs> Oh, I corner, I corner, Klaucho <laughs> Bedza. This is not good. Okay, all right, now here we go. So what we do, but don't worry, if you go to Moby School, it's going to explain it in a lot of detail. So we plug into the derivative, and that gives you 16 cubic meters per minute. That's the, the volume is actually increasing in the trough. You see there, so if we go back to the picture, let's have a look here. You can see at that moment, the volume is increasing. 